uh, to tell you the truth, I cannot say that uh, uh, we will do uh, one bucket uh, on the account of the other, on or uh, and to spare the other. No, we have to do them all. Uh, they are all needed. We need investments in exploration. We need investments in transition. We need uh, investments in uh, renewable. We need investments in uh, decarbonization. And uh, I think that even the some of the countries and some of the uh, uh, ideas uh, we're talking about today, we will need to have all uh, the um, energy, renewable energy in place. I think that uh, this token has changed. And uh, now they realize that uh, it is not practical to say that, so therefore uh, they have given themselves a realistic uh, time span and therefore we see that in order to expand the uh, lifetime of the uh, resources that not necessarily Egypt but the, the, the world has got, we need to develop them responsibly and therefore we need to decarbonize our industry and this is number one at the same time because we have seen the prices of oil and gas are extremely high now and uh, i would say that this will uh, have a negative impact on many economies of, of, in the world uh, I, therefore we need to increase the production of these fossil fuels, but in a responsible manner. Uh, otherwise, less investments, that means less production, that means higher prices, and it is going to be a vicious circle. This is from one side, but we truly believe that our world, our uh, new generations, our kids, our grandkids, needs uh, a better future and uh, we have to demonstrate uh, we have to admit that there is uh, an effect to the global warming it's obvious we have seen uh, a lot of changes in the climate and in everywhere therefore we have uh, to really accelerate the transition as well and uh, we need to have uh, smart practical uh, plans and ideas to implement this transition for renewables as well as for different low carbon energies, not necessarily hydrogen uh, specifically, but all types of needed uh, sustainable and affordable uh, types of energy. So again, to summarize what I said, we need the investments in all aspects and uh, I, I wouldn't prioritize any of them. What are, are there particular challenges that face Egypt? You know, we're looking at the challenges of the energy trilemma. We're looking at affordability, availability, sustainability. And again, those challenges, I think, vary right around the world. Anything specific here that needs more attention? Well, I need to be very prudent while, while answering this question. Uh, and diplomatic. So... Uh, I think most of my audience understand that uh, we, we, we need to rationalize our consumption. This is uh, very important. We need to, uh, to consume less uh, of our fossil fuel and uh, in order to make sure that we add more of what we were blessed from God giving us sun and wind. So I think that we have to put more of renewable into our systems and to consume less of our fossil fuel energies in order to uh, avail more foreign currency. And then this will be positively reflected to our economy. This is from one side. The other side is that really we need also to work on energy efficiencies and this is something that we started already in our uh, sector but this is not enough we need to implement all these projects of energy efficiency across the country meanwhile i think that we need to be 
serious about uh, commitments, uh, commitments vis-a-vis -vis, uh, passion, hard working, and uh, delivering um, what we think that we can do. I mean, uh, we need to have uh, better work efficiency, and here I would talk to uh, my team and my uh, sector where I can see a lot of opportunities and a lot of uh, room for improvement. Although we are still considered among the best in class in, uh, in comparison to any other uh, segment or any other ministry in Egypt, however, I see there are a lot of uh, more of opportunities. But at the end of the day, we need more exports, we need to import less, and uh, uh, this is uh, across the country definitely. We need to also uh, look at uh, our yearly increase in population. And this is something that is really eating whatever uh, growth in our uh, GDP is eaten by the growth of population. So uh, you, you were asking me a generic question and this is the generic answer, uh, not necessarily that I would uh, be uh, accountable for this particular last point, but this if you ask me how we can help our economy, because part of it is uh, can be played by our uh, industry as oil and gas or energy industry, but there are other portions that needed to be, um, I would say, consolidated effort by different parties. And, and it's, it's really, don't get complacent very much is I think also a bit of a, a message that I'm hearing there. Talk to me about, you know, the um, importance of the East Med and so many people have spoken about this and the work that has been done in terms of building this up, particularly when it comes to actually energy security and helping the EU. And you had the commissioner here as well for this event. Well, as you said, uh, Edna, I don't want to repeat what we have been talking for years, but uh, and in sessions and in panels. No, I just want to say something that with the East Mediterranean again, and this was one of the dreams that we had six years ago. I just wanted to say that we have proven the concept, and the East Mediterranean model is a success story, and that we can replicate it. And uh, it has proven that Egypt can cooperate and can be accountable for bigger responsibilities and to be a catalyst and to be an agent of good coordination, good cooperation between countries. So I think over the scale that we have done so far, which is the East Mediterranean Gas Forum, based uh, headquarters in Cairo, I think we have proven the concept. Therefore, yesterday in one of the panels, and I think I was asked almost the same question, but differently when I, when I was asked, oh, how do you see it in six years to come? So I say that uh, this uh, East Mediterranean Gas Forum could be East Mediterranean Energy Forum, and then ultimately it will be uh, the Mediterranean Energy Forum. So uh, with a bigger, uh, with a bigger uh, participants, big, bigger parties, bigger countries, uh, number of countries in this uh, uh, forum. So this is how I can say. We've had many ministers and many people, you know, even from a uh, developed world talking about the concept of a just transition, how they want to make sure it's happening. And we've also heard a bit of frustration from many of the ministers from the global south that things, you know, are not getting easier and the expectations that are out there, things need to be different. What do you say? Where, is, is there an ideal way to progress or do we just have to, to I suppose, make it up as we go? I mean, how... What can we do to ensure the just transition? I mean, this just transition, we have been also talking about it for a lot, especially during last year, uh, when we were promoting for COP27 and Egypt uh, representing Africa. This will not happen 
and we'll be still talking about it as long as there are no funds. So if we are not receiving any concessionary funds, uh, we will not have a just transition. So therefore, uh, people are just talking and talking and uh, sending messages, that's fine. But at least what I can tell you that uh, perhaps we have a, um, a good uh, step on the road, on, on the right uh, road, which is uh, what we have been able to do as presidency of the COP27 last year, is to achieve the creation of the fund of loss and damage. And this is very important because this is an admission that uh, the, the global uh, the, glo the global and the entire world has uh, acknowledged that uh, there is a need to have a fund for uh, losses and damage. And this is something that, in my opinion, is the first step to reach this uh, just transition. For how long? What are the mechanics of the uh, implementation of this fund? We don't know yet. However, I think this is a very great achievement and a very good uh, success at the beginning of a, uh, a I would say, a, a step that will lead you to this just transition. And of course, I'm sure you expect this to be continued and more to be built on that when you go to the United Arab Emirates next year, this year. I think so. I think that we have paved the way uh, for many, uh, many things, among which, or most importantly, that we have had uh, this uh, respectful industry, the oil and gas industry, energy industry, invited uh, to the COP and uh, now has a place, has a share uh, into the negotiations and into the conference, and therefore being invited uh, to um, the COP28 uh, in uh, United Arab Emirates this year. It will be a continuation of what we started, and I think we will have more and more successes uh, in, the, um, in, the con in, the in the side of the implementation. So we are not going to talk more of uh, theories and uh, thoughts. No, we are now talking about inclusing, inclusive and implementation. And finally, we have less than a minute here, but just take the time to just get us ready for next year. We're coming with, uh, we the dates are in place, and um, a little twist on the branding. You know, it's never been just about petroleum. It's always been a more holistic show without a doubt, but now you're making sure that everybody sees that. Exactly. I think that uh, we were very uh, visionary on having uh, the proper time to decide to uh, to change our brand uh, with a little uh, a little modification that wouldn't uh, change a lot about it. Uh, we're not seeing it here, but uh, to have it uh, as uh, the Egypt Energy Show, uh, it's more uh, of uh, expressive and more of uh, inclusive to all the activities that we are talking about. If we are talking about transitioning uh, to sustainable energy, if we are talking about uh, CCUS, if we are talking about new, uh, new energies like hydrogen, I think we should include it together with oil and gas and whatever under the umbrella of energy. So energy uh, will be uh, the new brand and as you have seen us uh, talking about it yesterday uh, during the panel and uh, in my opening uh, speech before the president as well as yesterday evening during uh, the, the gala dinner. So we will expect this to have and to include and to uh, gather and to attract more participants, more stakeholders from this industry as well as more exhibitors and I think all, all, um, across the region it will be a, uh, an important uh, conference uh, from there on onwards.
Oh, without a doubt. I mean, I think it clearly, uh, you know, is, is, is on the international map. We see the people who are here from all over the world. We see our exhibitors. I think the great attention that has been here. And again, well done to you and well done Thank to you. that vision. Because I remember six years ago when some people were like, a show in, in, in Egypt, really? And now everybody is coming here. So I think, again, that was the vision that was in place. You pulled all the right people together. Thank you, Edna. And we're here six years later. It's just, it's absolutely remarkable. So to you and all of your team and all of the, the people that, uh, you know, work closely with you, good luck. Um, again, I have to let him go. I want to thank you so much.